Hello everyone, I at 0386SX, and as I sp speak to you, I am zooming in on what looks like a battery. Talk about batteries quite often on this channel, but what is the actual purpose of this battery? I'll give you a hint here. This battery provides a functionality that we take for granted today. It's not done this feature that we see today and all modern computers is not handled by a battery like this one but back in the early 90s it was handled by a battery some machines combine the functionality of the uh, this feature and the CMOS like I think Apple did that the compact LTE 5000 which I made a video on recently Here's an original. It handles CMOS and the feature we take for granted today. So what does it do? Well, it's a hibernation battery. And before I, I flip this over, reveal the rest of this label, it is a 7.2 volt 50 milliamp NICAD. Or nickel cadmium or nickel cadmium. It's pronounced a little bit differently across different sectors of the world. Little trivia thing. What does this actually, what does this particular one actually go to? Well, we'll reveal the rest of the part number. This actually goes to a computer we talk about quite regularly on this machine, the Compact LTE Lite. Now, the history lesson is, besides I old Mr. I80386SX blabbing about these things all the time. What makes this computer so significant in the hibernation world? Very simple. This is the first computer ever released to have hibernation. Now, what was the hibernation's original purpose? And why was there a battery involved? Well, that's probably part of it because that's what the technology that was available to us at the time in the early 90s. But hibernation, if your regular battery ran out, and I just pointed to something you can't see, the machine would power down into hibernation state, and this guy, if it was charged, would allow you enough time to A, either swap another battery, or B, plug yourself into an AC adapter. This was primarily useful when you're on an airport, or you're on an airplane, you're working on your computer, your battery runs out, and you need to work on whatever you're working on, that, that spreadsheet, or that Word document, or that database. I wasn't alive very long in the 90s at that time, so I don't know what people did with their computers all that much, but we know they weren't browsing the web. And that was also before 9-11 when you were allowed to carry extra batteries. Because they just weren't very good and that was before all the heightened security stuff. So that's the big selling point behind hibernation. It took a long time before it really got to be stable. Now, if you're in the vintage computer world and you want to just have a vintage computer... And you ask the question, do I need this? On the LTE Lite, the answer is no. In fact, if you're not going to use the power features or the hibernation, or if your main battery is a paperweight and you don't feel like you're building it, I strongly recommend pulling this thing out and tossing it. Otherwise, you will be greeted with something like this. As you can tell, it started to blow up. The leads corroded off. I have another one like this that I stripped out. It fell apart in the lead stripped and corroded the motherboard. So get that thing out of there. You don't need it. But for interest of research, I did actually take apart one of these machines in. It's a sad looking piece of machinery here, but I did spot weld the battery together. 
I'm not going to go into the actual spot welding part of it. This is actually, and part of that is because this is my second attempt making this video. The first attempt was an hour and a half and I basically got nothing done. So if you are going to make one of these, get rid of the dog hair. You need six of these guys. I'll put a, um, the eBay listing in my description of this video. They are from Washington State. You'll need a spot welder and nickel strips. And if your connector can be reused, great. Otherwise, you will need a JST PH 2.0. And when you do that, you'll have to make two modifications to this connector. And if I could put the rest of them in the bag, that would be swell. The first problem that comes with a JST connector out of the box, see if I can hold up the battery for reference here. I don't have to be super in focus, but look at where the wires are at. On one lead, the red wire is on the left, and the other one's on the right. You'll need to configure it so the red lead is on the right. And there's no tricks, there's your battery. That's very easy to do. And this is where you'll need a very small flathead screwdriver to achieve this. There's some small plastic. All you gotta do, if I could get into the camera, that would be nice. I don't know why my light is on. But whatever. Let's see if I can... Ah, no. <laughs> this is just fun. Let's see if I can get this to focus now that that darn light is out of the loop. Okay, of course, nothing wants to cooperate. Now I got it. So there's some, there's a plastic tab here. You'll have to lift that up just enough and that wire will slide out. I can try and demonstrate that if my camera will even think to cooperate. And this one I can go from the side on. Not all of them are going to have this luxury. Now we are underneath, and you just pull that wire right out, and you are home free. You do the same to the black, and then once you're out, you just swap them, uh, swap the locations. The second modification you'll have to make, there's a little, I can kind of see it, there's a little ridge here. You'll have to take something and make that flush. You can use something as simple as a fingernail clipper or a toenail clipper, because that's what the professional bad example had laying around, or a Dremel tool can grind that off, or... You gotta get that, you gotta get that piece off no matter what. No matter what way you look at it, you gotta get rid of that. is not that be pretty? You just gotta get rid of it. As you can tell, professional bad example, it's pretty much flush. And that's fine. So, where in God's name is this battery? Well, let's take apart this LTE Light 25 and I shall show you. And if you're this far, if you're going to take apart your computer, you might as well get a CR2430 ready. Because that's on the other side of the motherboard. And you're basically tearing apart the whole thing to get to this hibernation battery. But unlike your modern computers. These are very easy to get to. And I do know that the screen on this machine does look a little bit unusual. I did replace the polarizing film with some samples off of Amazon and while I don't have vinegar syndrome anymore, there's probably better solutions out there than what I use. But I wanted to make a demonstration. This was a research machine, so. I don't care enough to raise a fit.
And if you're new to LTE Light World and the 386S20 World, for that matter, I was today years old when I learned this on the 386S20, but if that CR2430 battery goes flat, you ain't turning the computer on. If you replace it, it'll be fine, but you need a CR2430 with any resemblance of a charge in order to turn a machine on if you are sporting a 386 like this one. And that came off with no issue. I don't know if I like that or not. I think this is basically a parts machine anyway, so life does go on. So next you want a keyboard connector. You just got to move this stuff out of the way just enough. In the case of the screen, that can stay. The floppy can actually stay, I believe. Or you could take the whole darn header with. That's cool too, right? And I'm trying to do that real cautiously because if you rip any of these cables, oh lord, you're going to have a challenge in your hands finding a replacement. Keyboard's got to go. There's eight. And I apologize. I'm not on focus here. So if you actually do have to disassemble this machine, there is my one of my very first videos does involve that. That also covers the replacement of the CR2430 battery. And I don't want to get these messed up with the other screws I have on the table here. There's some mystery screws. Possibly from another LTE light. And you will want to remove the hard drive because that will get in the way of a hibernation battery. And Oh, that's interesting. And on second thought, we are going to remove the floppy. Now at this point, make sure you have this either laying flat... Otherwise, your machine's going to tip up. And now, there are five screws you must take off. There's one here, two, three, four, and five. So let's do that right away. And this one's... <laughs> never been taken apart or a prison guard got to it first yeah even that one was a nightmare to get to hmm ah come on You do want to get these out completely. So now you should be able to lift... Oh, one more problem. I don't know if I can catch it on film, but there is some tape here. So you need to cut or remove it. The tape may vary depending on what you have. It's tape... I think that got her. Can't tell. 
from this angle. Yeah, this is Yeah, my on the later models of this machine is a piece of sticker, not a full on piece of tape like this one has. So I think Compaq realized their uh mistake and said, well, we're not we don't need we don't need to make these things in the Fort Knox. Let's see, maybe I got enough of it where I can separate it. Or is the modem in the way? Very well, maybe. Nope. Bottom is not in the way. So, we got that separated. And there is... Six screws. I lied. Or the 486s only had five. I'm not sure. Nope. I just missed that one. So... We pull that cover off, and there is your hibernation battery. This one looks like the leads are starting to corrode, so we'll get this one out of here. A needle nose should be able to, in theory, supposed to be able just to pull them right out, but that is proving to not be an easy task. You may run into problems depending on what state of decay, if any, your hibernation battery is in. Come on. I don't remember this being this hard, but well, it was a month ago since I tried the first video, so maybe I forgot a few things. see if we can there we go so a combination of a needle nose and a small flathead screwdriver and we have this thing on its way out and I just saw something that's very rare for today Where this modem is made. You won't see that anymore in a modern computer. Yeah, there's a little corrosion on this old one. It, this one's in pretty good shape. Now I may be drastically fooled once I open this thing up, but there's no obvious signs of corrosion on the case itself, so I think that one might be fine yet in terms of physical condition. We're not going to reuse that set of batteries, so that's not a question at all. So let's now shove our garbled mess in. And remember, the red lead goes on the right. And God forbid, if you really want me to make one of these or make a video on this, I will. It's a long, tedious process. I don't know if I'm confident enough to actually sell these on eBay if somebody would ask, but we'll cross that bridge when I get that far. If or when I get that far. That's in just fine. 
And I don't know if this thing still has any significant charge yet, but we will find that out in right now. And I don't know if we can read that. That one you can read. And this has 4.7 volts. So this thing, that battery still has a charge, so that's good. Despite not being on anything in a month, that's actually pretty good. So now we gotta put this thing back together. And I did replace the CR2430 in this machine recently. It's either when I did this battery or when I first started the YouTube channel. Or at least the vintage computer side of my channel. And either way, it's been... It was recent, so I ain't worried about it. Now the challenge is get these wires in. The other downside to these JST20 connectors, and maybe there's thinner ones out there, but it's a very thick wires compared to the old connector. Goodness. I wonder. If I put this in slightly backwards. Oh. I'm gonna figure out something here because I don't think it went in this hard. Unless we do it like this. Get that out of the way. Okay. As long as your wires are insulated, I don't see a problem with shoving them under the motherboard like this. Could easily shorten them, but... Cool. So that should make our cover go on much easier. Watch it make a liar out of me. No, that went on much better. Okay, great. So let's put our computer back together. And I just uh, probably should have cautioned you in the beginning on this. But I will show you this when we have this computer back together. There is one critical feature that you need enabled. You'll be able to see it in the BIOS. But you can't change it in the BIOS. There's a piece of software that Compaq installed on every one of their machines out of the factory that you'll need to change this setting out of. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'll show you on another machine what that software actually is and I don't know if the Compaq had anything for Windows 95 with it, but I know it came on 3.1 machines for sure. At some point, I'm gonna, I do have some basically factory fresh copies of 3.1 that I want to copy off on a secure source and re-image away when it comes time. Most of my machines are still authentic. Alright, so let's get everything put back together. The 
And unfortunately, I broke my connector here to some degree, so this is going to be one wonderful challenge trying to get this back together. Holy mother. I think it went in regardless. Not that the floppy is going to do as much good. I'll tell you what. If I ever find a solution to get these working consistently. You know I'm going to be uploading that right away. I'll be like a kid on Christmas, probably throughout the whole video, but we'll cross that bridge if or when we get there. As long as the keyboard works, I don't care about. We're not going for perfection here. I'm also not going to completely put this machine back together just yet. I'll put the screws in. This one's got a grounding screw, so we'll take advantage of that. Ah, maybe it's not meant to be, I don't know. Get in there. Enough's enough. Don't like me when I'm angry. And holy cow, this is a 27 minute video already and I have done next to nothing. I'm trying to work on that. This is probably more than I should be doing with this, but, well, professional bad example is at it again. And I have one screw that doesn't want to start for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that one. May have something to do with our stupid sticker. Yeah, that sucker is raised up good here. Or, hold on a minute here, I messed this up. Alright, keyboard comes back out, because that's somehow the keyboard got underneath the metal bracket. I have never done that before on one of these, but first time for everything, I guess. I hope I don't have to take more than that apart. There we go. So let's try this again.
That's more like it. Uh, we fiddled around with keyboards and screws for the last 10 minutes. So, no video is complete until you screw something up. And I hope that's dog hair. Or my hair. Alright, so, let's turn this machine on and let's see what we're talking about. And I hope we can see the screen. Kind of can. Oh, I just turned the light off. Okay. Let's see if I can turn my light off in here to see if we're... it'll make things any better to see this. Alright, you can definitely see it now. So, we girls scroll down. There's one feature. If it's not turned on, all bets are off. This is hibernation. If that's not enabled, I don't care what you're going to do with this battery. Your hibernation battery feature will never work if that is in a disabled state. And there's more bad news if it's in a disabled state. You need a piece of software to enable it. And I'm going to show you what that is right now. I don't have it on that particular laptop, so... Professional bad example is going to stack on top. All right, so I need to plug in this computer. I did not think this through because I don't know how to get to, uh, oh, we're gonna try this. So compact utilities. And this one's just called, maybe. Power icon and it goes to this you can set your hibernation to on or off this will change it but with standby off hibernation will not occur to low battery so yeah so there's a couple things you could do here you can put this if you can put the computer in standby this this setting looks like it'll go into hibernation immediately. Always here's a timeout, and some of these are good tricks. So it looks like regardless if you're on battery or not, some of these other options, it's basically a hibernation timer. So if you set it for 0.5 hours, it'll go into hibernation regardless of you're on power or not. Since we're not going to use this computer,
And this is a little side distraction. Well, this is a distraction I didn't anticipate, but oh well. The hard drive light's still going, so it is doing something. Alright, we're good. This is one of the computers I want to image. And I haven't figured out how to go about that yet. My only LTE Light 20, a very nice guy over in New York State, sold it to me for basically pennies on the dollar. He somehow got the disk drive to work using belts from the company formerly known as MCM Electronics. I don't know what he did. I couldn't get it to work. He told me the details, but... Well, anywho, back to our original test subject at hand. So now, let's see if the hibernation feature will actually work. And fun little fact, this computer came with a nickel cadmium battery for the main battery as well. You don't see too many of those. All right, no mouse, that's okay. I think that's okay. Let's open some stuff up here. I'll open up a nice command prompt. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if this is going to work with the way I have this set up. Because I don't know what exactly I have configured beyond that hibernation is enabled, so. If you know, if you know what that uh, utility is actually called, please put it in the comments section. So, well, let's think the battery is at a quarter. This is one of those batteries that lasts about 10 minutes at full charge, so I'm hoping that we can get this sucker into hibernation sooner than later.
Don't know if I should do a magic of video editing moment here. I don't know how well you can see this. I can see it just fine. But I don't know how well you can see it. I don't even know if standby is going to work. Yeah, I don't have a standby menu on this, so... Well, we can fiddle around and see what we can do with that. Yeah, I do not have a power. So I think we do need to enable some more stuff, but... Let's make sure that, uh... We don't have anything missing here in the device manager, and... Oh. There we go. Oh! We missing lots of stuff in device manager. Alright, let's see if we can correct that. There are actually at least two things missing here. So... We are definitely going to be video editing here for a little bit. But before I do that, under system devices, there's supposed to be two things that come up, if I'm not mistaken. One is advanced power management, or something along those lines, and the other one is compact LTE light support. So let me do a little bit of work while I do a little magic of video editing. Well, folks, I decided to switch gears a little bit here, and uh, as you can see, this is a Windows 3.1 installation. I wanted those, uh, I wanted this utility so we can control the uh, hibernation capabilities. I am not having my way with the Windows 95 install I was working with, so I decided to go reimage this thing from another LTE light. So, right now, as it stands, this is very important. Kind of hard to see on my goofy screen. Standby is currently 10 minutes. System idle 3, fixed disk drive 2, screensaver of 5. So, we're going to get out of there. I set the hibernation parameters. So, this machine, as soon as it goes into standby, it'll hibernate. So, 10 minutes time, we're going to load some stuff. Windows 3.1 had a recorder? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I did not know that. I was today years old when I learned that. I don't know if that's, that might be accessories. Okay, I need to load some cool stuff here. And I am topping one-handed here, so... The English language. What the hell? Why is Z apparently? I have no idea what that's about, but whatever. Are there letters like that? I have never seen such a thing where the Y and the Z are just switched around like that, but whatever. So we will come back in 10 minutes' time when this machine does go to sleep. It should go and hibernate. And then we will try the big test and see what happens with this laptop. Alright, this sucker should shut off at any minute now. So we'll just see what it does. And I apologize, you get to see my white tuckus and the glossy screen, the only compact LTE light in the world that's been filmed anyway that has this ridiculous setup. Might be maybe a minute or two early on that uh, 10 minute period that we established earlier.
that. By the way, if you watch my other videos, this battery may look familiar. Now, I should really clean that off, but I kind of left it on there as a mark to uh, identify it as my first successful rebuild of a compact LTE light battery. If you yourself want to do this, and really any LTE light, the LTE Elite, the 5000s, are all very similarly built. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> Uh, struggle for me, probably not for a normal person, but but all our batteries are very similar. They got that white shell. They got ten cells. They all, in fact, use Sanyo cells. So, well, this thing gonna make a liar out of me or what? I'll leave it on for one more minute and I'll see what it does. I'm gotta think we're getting close to that 10 minute mark that it's, uh, we referenced earlier. Okay, my darn tripod. My screen's not actually on at this time, so we'll... That's not going to be any help to zoom in on that at the moment. So the screen lit up, the hard drive light is going, let it go at this time, and I apologize for that extracurricular activity in the background. And the computer, at this point, we have no power light on, we have no nothing on. So, let's see if our effort paid off. If all goes well, you should see the message of truth on the screen. We have a very messy desk. The mouse switch didn't do anything anyway, so I'm just going to cut that out. No cords of any kind connected to this machine, and soon there will be no battery connected to this machine. But now we get to be stupid and try to do this one-handed, or you'll get to see a random docking station side. <laughs> what do you want to call it? Battery's out. Now, this is the point where if you're on the airplane, you put the other battery in, or you get this to an AC power source if you're not on an airplane, obviously. Moment of truth. I know that screen does not look the best, but that is the polarizing film that was used, not the screen itself. Oh! And we are restoring our hibernated state, so... So far... So very good. At the end of the day, we'll see if it does what it's supposed to do. Well. It started off with a lot of promise. Oh! Hey, hey, hey! 
the message of truth is back. And you clearly saw there was no power to this machine for quite a while. So I say our mission here was a success. And ladies and gentlemen and others and now if this gets on the Pluto or wherever galaxy it may come out. You just saw a something that we take for granted today on a computer from the early 90s and it did exactly what it was supposed to do with all three of its batteries working properly. The machine went into hibernate like it was supposed to although it took a while because well it has to write data to the hard drive. In this case it, it wrote the contents of the memory I assume. So then this machine had 8 megs of RAM so that's what it wrote. If you have a machine that's maxed out at 20 megs of RAM it'll write 20 megs so if you do do this especially in the year 2021 and beyond make sure this battery is fully working and there's a rebuild guide on that like I mentioned and the battery that is here the hibernation battery make sure all of that is in full top working condition especially on a machine the more memory it it has the longer it's going to take so very fun blast from the past that is hibernation or one of the first hibernation systems ever built for the personal computer world and I hear all the time in college that it didn't work but this one actually worked and Windows 3.1 has absolutely no power saving features built into it whatsoever that I know of and you can correct me in the comment section if you want on that so I think I blabbed enough I'm very happy that this did work out if, despite everything I went through I probably didn't need to load Windows 3.1 on here but I well, probably did for the power pieces of it but so I'm gonna try and recap this so three working batteries that includes a CMOS battery if you have a 386 you ain't getting far without that anyway you need this power con or you need compact power utilities installed on the machine the supplemental programs are supposed to provide that but I haven't found either way that they do or not I just happen to have this image I bought from a individual over on eBay years ago and I made a copy of it tonight so really happy that I did and let's try to go into we'll go through exactly what I did you'll load up PowerCon you can also do this in DOS use my nasal passages as they're starting to take over and this just make sure the machine's in standby mode that's all I can say medium's good and set hibernation parameters this is very important what I would do if you're not sure I would do a hibernation file delete save your settings go back into the program and turn it back on and go hibernation timeouts and standby is probably the best I would not go anywhere higher than an hour because most of these batteries do not last more than that volume parameters that just squawks at you when it's going into hibernation who cares pop-up size is entirely up to you I didn't actually see it come on but not a big deal power exe parameters I'm gonna be honest I've never messed with that before some machines have it some don't so that might be something I might revisit at some point this will tell you the battery status and mine does say an accurate gauge because this has a lot higher capacity than the OEM battery so that I have a feeling that has something to do with it and once you're all said and done you want to save changes and exit or if you don't make anything exit without saving changes so that's pretty much going to be it for me on this one uh, this is new territory for me I wasn't even sure if I was going to get this to work but thankfully it did I don't know how long that hibernation battery actually lasts this is and I don't even know how stable it is because this is the very first machine that ever came with that capability a compact LTE light crazy huh so anywho 
you have any questions, comments, concerns, or even constructive criticism, please feel free to drop them in the comments section. If you can fill in any gaps about the information with hibernation or what utilities or S soft pack number these are, please put them in the comments section. Uh, so thank you again for watching another i80386SX vintage computer repair video. I'm glad to get this one done and it was a blast to make.